Hey everybody and welcome. Happy Thursday for those that are here live. Happy whatever day of week it is for you, wherever it is that you are tuning in. Thanks so much. This is this is the last show I think of the season. We 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 take our seasons based on major Jewish holidays. The last time we had a break, if I remember correctly, was the holiday of Sukkot, the holiday of Sukkot. That was in September, October. Thank God we've had the good fortune, all from God, to, to be together since. Uh, and this is, I guess, the end of the winter season. And when we come back from Passover, we're going to start the spring. We've been talking about Passover. We've been talking about a whole bunch of ways that we can look at our lives. Destroying the idols that are holding us back. Shifting the narrative that we've been hearing, to the narrative that is going to make us who we are. I've been quoting Rabbi Levi, Rabbi Moshe Levi from Israel, who's really been guiding me in a lot of this stuff. I want to sort of end with a thought that he shared with me. I want to talk about it a little bit today. One of the most, I think, One of the most important transitions that take place in any area is the transition that takes place between the person that sits in the driver's seat and the person that sits shotgun, which I just recently learned was called shotgun because in the old days, I think that's where the bank robbers had the guy hold the gun or if it was a bank robbery, but. In the old days, they literally held the shotgun out of the front seat, which is why it's still called shotgun. Life as a way of moving. It moves. Seasons change, people get older. Things pass, things get created. Life moves. And we have to choose if we're going to sit in the front seat to the right, in the shotgun seat, or we're going to sit in the driver's seat. Sports are fun when you're the spectator. It changes when you're the coach and the player. It's much more nerve-wracking when the ball's in your hands than when you're watching someone else with the ball in their hands. It's fun to watch somebody else on a screen almost lose everything and then it makes it it's fun to and it's exhilarating to be a spectator in life it's hard to be a player it's hard to be a coach we watch them at the end, but every person you've ever seen play a professional sport, for the most part, and that they're very good, for every five minutes you watch them, there must be 5,000 hours that you don't. Working, 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 exhausting, exhausting, not eating, training, training, training. It's hard, which is why most people would rather watch it. If I can sum up what we're trying to do here, for me and for you, is we're trying to become bigger players in our life. We're trying to realize that there's nothing more important than taking responsibility and control for our minds. And that's hard because we got to come face to face with the stuff that we've been telling ourselves our whole lives that's not true. We gotta come face to face with things that are our insecurities and our failures, our weaknesses. We have to come face to face with things that we need to fix, but we've been too busy focusing on entertaining ourselves or blaming somebody else to actually go in and fix it. We have to come face to face with things that are hard to see, but need to be seen. We have a hard time calling people when it's uncomfortable. 
And as soon as someone makes the decision, they want this. They want this. They're strong enough for this. They want to be in control. They want to, they want to influence their own life at the next level. As soon as somebody is willing to see themselves as a person who will do whatever it takes to become great, in the truest sense of the word, to reveal the godliness that is within you, as soon as we make that decision and we identify with that, everything changes. I once saw a quote, I don't remember where, but the only thing scarier than failure is unrealized potential. That awesome. The only thing scarier to a thinking person of failure is unrealized potential, which is why as soon as you realize that there's so much more that we can do, failure is the price that we pay to get it done. And so much of what I think we're trying to do over these past weeks, do you remember the stuff that we've been working on? Zeal, do you remember zeal and discipline and you know harmony and remember all that stuff? Honor. We went through the different spherot, chesed, and gavura, tiferes, hod. I'm sorry, netzach, hod, yisod, foundation, malchus, royal. Remember we talked about royalty? Remember royalty? What it means to be royal, to connect to something deeper, to stand for something more. All of that necessitates me and you saying, the greatest fear of my life is unrealized potential. And I'm not going to realize who I am in my core. If I hide, I put my head in the sand. I don't confront challenges. I'm not willing to be uncomfortable. I don't call myself out when I'm really lying to myself. I don't go after my own ego just as much as I'd go after someone else's ego. Unless I'm willing to do what's right over what looks great. I'm willing to go at the end of my day and rethink some of the things that I totally thought I was right on. To see where is my, in Hebrew it's called a yetzer, where is my, where's that voice? Is that voice right that keeps on telling me, you're right, you're right. That was, you know that voice you get like when you're about to tell somebody off and that voice that encourages you was I right when I did that was I sensitive when I did that if we are willing and I'm saying we together are willing to do the hard work of self introspection and to not let ourselves up I'm just channeling Rabbi Levy to you. Don't worry, this isn't Charlie Harari. This is much holier than Charlie Harari. This is coming straight at you from B'nai Brak, Israel. If we're willing to be hard on ourselves, in a good way, in a positive way, in an encouraging way, in a way that builds us that doesn't destroy us in a way that is smart we're not gonna just heap negativity on ourselves because we like to self-loathe we're going to wake up in the morning and say i need to push myself to be greater today it's not enough that i was good yesterday to my family i gotta be better it's not enough that i bought something i gotta figure out what's driving me and go further i gotta constantly be pushing myself what idol is still in my way that i can smash what narrative is still in my head that I can start to change in someone else's head? Where am I not operating with zeal? I'm a Navy zeal. Where am I still too lazy? Where am I still too in this earth? What am I waiting for? If we can, if we can see that everything we want in life is just in our own minds, we are dictating this ship. We are navigating this world through here, through our minds. 
And if we get our minds right, now we've given our soul a conduit to come out into the world. Now we're on mission. Once we realize that it is us that needs fixing, and that's a good thing, and we're willing to fix it, to mold it, to, to iterate, to question, to be inquisitive, to, to pull back. This happened to me a couple of days ago. Someone said something to me that was, it wasn't, it wasn't offensive. It was, maybe it was, but it wasn't really offensive. And, it, and they were wrong. And I had this like really clear way of showing them they were wrong. And as I was saying it, I was finding myself too angry. So I tried so hard to say, wait, 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 wait. What's, what's it like in their perspective? And as the person speaking, I'm trying to get there and it's dawning on me that he's not trying to be offensive. He just doesn't know. To judge ourselves, not that I'm, I'm not in any way at, at a level that I do this enough, to judge ourselves, to, to be open with ourselves in our own time so that our relationships are strong, so that we forgive other people. I, heard, I saw this beautiful idea from Robert Jonathan Sachs. Jonathan, Robert Jonathan Sachs was a master. He passed away this year. What a loss. A master. Listen to this beautiful idea. He says, you know that when the Jews left Egypt, God commanded them to take, to borrow, or to take whatever, the silver and gold from the Egyptians. They did. They walked out with the silver and the gold of the entire Egyptian society. Can you imagine? He asks, why? What were they doing with it? They weren't going to trade it. They went to the desert. They needed to schlep silver and gold. What was the point of that? And he says something so beautiful. He says, you know, we have a rule, a law. You know, when the Jews came to Israel, they, they had slavery. It wasn't slavery that we know of. It was basically employment. It was, it was, it was long-term employment with incredible benefits. And when they left, they had the, 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 the owner or the boss had to send off these people with, with gifts. Why? So Rory Sachs is something amazing. Because there may be some resentment when you're working for someone for so long. And when you're leaving, you may look back and have a whole bunch of things that you don't like. Ever leave, you ever leave a job and you're still mad at your boss? You ever do that? You ever leave a job and you didn't get what you deserved or whatever, you're still holding the grudge, you know? In order to prevent that, the rabbis teach us, send them off with some gifts so that when they leave there, there's no grudge. You know what God had, the Zerus acts, why God had the Jews take the silver and gold? Because on the way out, the Jews would have looked back with a grudge. And they would have looked down and had the silver and gold would have been tremendously valuable, would have reminded them that there is just a, ease off a little bit on the grudge, on the resentment. It would have sweetened it a little bit. And you're never fully free if you're still holding a grudge. God wanted the Jews to be fully free. And he knew that if they left and they still held on to the hatred of the Egyptians, they would never be fully free. Is that great? We're still holding on to stuff. We really are. Grudges, resentment. It's only holding us down. You're never fully free if you're still holding on to a grudge. But that's hard work. That is hard, hard work. That is inner work to let it go for real, to realize that they don't run the world and it's just for whatever reason had to come to you, to realize that holding on to a grudge only hurts you. 
freedom is being able to work on yourself so that the limitations that have gotten in your way don't get in your way anymore. If we're talking about these things and we can't implement them, it loses its effectiveness. The whole goal of the show is for us to not only understand different ideas, but it's for us to resolve that I'm going to work at it. And it's going to take time. But I'm going to do it because what else is there? This is my life. Do I want to look back with regrets? Do I want to look at people that have maybe gotten older or, or passed with regrets? Do I want to look at parts of my life with regrets? I don't. The scariest thing is unrealized potential. And sometimes the, the, the cost to realize that potential is potential failure. But it's a decision that we have to make to do the hard work, to try things out that feel uncomfortable, to stick with them when they get boring, to have conversations that we wouldn't have otherwise had, to look at things that we don't want to look at, to connect to people that we may have to take the first step, to try to be more spiritual, even though we may not have had the background, to take a chance in our lives, a well thought out chance, but a chance to forgive people. There's a woman that listens to this show, you know who you are, went through a really hard upbringing really hard upbringing to forgive your parents if it was hard they, they did the best they could to forgive your teachers to forgive your friends to forgive the people around you that have hurt you husbands and wives to forgive each other each person is just trying I'm just channeling our reliever right now I'm not just channeling him to forgive your kids, to be full and whole, to be free. That's what we're trying to all be, to be free, to be free of our societies that promise us things that never really deliver on. We end up running races that are their races, but don't help us in the end. To run our own race, to build on our, on our values, to be free to pursue what we'd like and what we dream of, to pursue a relationship with the creator, to be free to fix what's broken about ourselves because we're all in some places broken. That's what makes life interesting, that we get to fix ourselves. It's a decision. It's a decision. And I hope we can make it together. You have to decide to be free. It doesn't, it's not a gift. It's earned. And once you decide, oh yeah, the gifts continue to roll. God wants you free more than you want yourself to be free. Because freedom is the expression of him in this world. So as we close out to the season, as we experience this holiday, whatever level you're experiencing, I want to thank you for your time. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being with me. Or any way you're listening, I really appreciate it. You don't know how much this means to me. Your time matters to me. It really does. And I hope that we can walk in to this small break and come out resolved to do whatever it takes to be the best that we can be. Our family deserves it. Our friends deserves it. We deserve it. And our God deserves it. So I wish you a happy holiday. Chag Sameach. Thank you for being here. And with God's help, I cannot wait to see you again afterwards. All the best.